I'm Oliver Trevina in studio with The Hollywood Reporter, joined by the magical Summer Bishop. <laughs> I couldn't debatable. stop myself. <laughs> no, I think you're magical. I could, yeah, I think I'm enchanting. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, enchanting. let's run with it. <laughs> yeah. At least on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they're magicians. writing for me. Well, they are yeah. writing for you, but yeah, you can bring exactly. some of that into your real life, yeah, surely. Exactly. I mean, maybe not the magical part, but, you know, yeah. who, knows? who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, season three. Yes. Exciting times for Margot. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's an exciting time for me as an actress. Right. Um, playing Margot. For Margot, I think it's as, as difficult as it's ever been. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's she's queen of, of this entire world, Fillory. Which is um, never easy. It's never right. easy. And, you know, it's, it's definitely understood that it's, expansive, mm -hmm. more of a mm -hmm. continent that they're dealing with right. than, you know, a single small nation. Right, right, right. Um, so there's constantly new discoveries mm -hmm. and things that they were not anticipating, um, whether it be a new magical creature right. that is indigenous to, to the land, right. Fillory, or um, some economical, you know, economic obstacle. You know, whatever it is, they're you know, being confronted with things rather suddenly and unexpectedly. Right, right. It is amazing. You mentioned, like, the, the creatures and everything in the show. It's visually... Right. It's, it's incredible. It is incredible. Does it yeah. blow your mind, like, when yeah. you record... You know, you're obviously filming and then you get to watch it yourself? Right. Because these yeah. creatures aren't real. No. I know that. No, I know not. that. Yeah, they're I've not, not been to the set, but I know that they're not real. Yeah. Um, so when you see it all in one, right. does it shock you? Like, it does shock me, but our special effects department does such an incredible job in getting some of these creatures, you know, sort of camera ready. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work is done through the makeup. Right, right. So it does sort of feel like you're, you're meeting this right. giant peacock <laughs> slash man because the wardrobe and the makeup right. is already it's done right. for you wow. so you don't have to imagine too much okay. when you're looking at at the indigenous characters in fillery um but it definitely takes me by surprise when i see a fully edited episode mm -hmm. and just everybody's performances because right. they're so right. it's such a huge ensemble mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you don't see a lot of what's being created right 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 so you mentioned the giant peacock kind of man is that yeah. your favorite creature <laughs> If I mean, you had to pick a favorite over the over the three seasons, honestly, one of the creatures that comes. Yeah, in. yeah, he is my favorite, and I it, and I just think his performance was amazing, and his mm -hmm. voice, and the whole thing was really imaginative, and um, and I think unique, and and not something we have you know seen before in fantasy. Right, right. So season three, yeah. how would you say that Margot's grown along the journey? Right. As as, a, as Margot herself, how she grown? Right. Um, you know, a lot of her growth in season two and three was inherent to the writing. Mm -hmm. In season one, um, she was sort of just being introduced, you know, in a sort of peripheral right, right, way. Right. So to keep it interesting for me in season one, I had to carve out a lot of nuance right. and, and, you know, set the, set the stage for, for the growth that you would, you would see in season two and three. Right. Um, but, but like I said, it is inherent in the writing this year. And I think, you know, she goes from being a quite you know, superficial mm -hmm. and, um, you know, vapid and sassy, sassy. Yeah. yeah. But, but maybe, maybe somebody you could call small right, right, in right, season right. one right. to by the end of season three, I think a very mindful and mm -hmm. thoughtful, um, ruler right, right, right. who is entitled to the position that she has sort of just been like given by circumstance right, and, right. and, and, you know, random, sort of selection. By the end, I think you, you're, you're sort of like, you know, you, you, you do deserve that title. Right. You are a queen. And you are entitled to it, finally. Right. You, you own know. it. You, you're yeah, taking that title. Yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah for you sure. You do as well. She earns I can Thank tell. You. I can tell. Thanks. Um, and on that note, you know, being in a show and getting, you know, to season three nowadays is a, right. is a, is a huge thing. It's you huge. know, you never know. Yeah. How has that been as an actress, like your growth as an actress, being able to, yeah. you know, be on a show for a long time, find your footing and stuff right. like that? How has that been? I mean... As an actress, um, I think it's 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 probably the greatest gift you can mm -hmm. get, um, it, and not only because of you know the obvious monetary comforts that, that it provides. Helps. That helps. It does help, <laughs> um, but but not only that, you know, it forces you to evolve as an actress. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to think about how to make a character likable, 
not only for a scene or, or two hours, mm -hmm. but for three whole years. Right. And to also take into account all of those three years. So right. you have to you have to be accountable to what you did season one. You have to answer for everything. But you also have to evolve in a way that feels compelling and interesting and um, and doesn't lose the audience's you know, attention and, and affection. Right. So it, it's definitely challenging. And I watch a lot of genre television shows that have have, have run for a very long time, mm -hmm. like Buffy the Vampire right. Slayer. Right, right. Um, and I think Charmed. You wanted to be on Charmed, Charmed growing up, didn't you? You wanted to be a yeah, witch. Yeah, I loved all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's cool to be on a show that's so inspired by, by those shows right. specifically. So yeah. What can we expect from the end of season three? Can you give us a little clue or... I think in the you know in the in the big picture, I think you can expect to see very different people ha you know be forced to to come together and work together to to restore magic. Okay. And um, you know you have to put aside a lot of you know differences and um, yeah. So I okay. think I can't reveal too much. I know. It's hard. That was a tough question. I was yeah. hoping you would just slip up and I give know. it away. But well, our show's so plot driven too. Right, that right. You can't, <laughs> you know, you can't be like, well, you know, our characters right. feel this way for like an entire year. It's right. like, it's very plot driven. If you could steal a magical power from any one of your castmates on the show, which magic power would you like? Mm, probably Quentin's. Okay. He's really great at mm -hmm. cards. Yeah, yeah. I would love to be good at cards. Have you not practiced any? Can you do any magic now? No, I'm horrible. No? I'm the worst <laughs> in the cast. They actually brought a magician. Right. And uh, a man who is who is really skilled with um, card tricks okay. and like a great teacher for anybody else but me. You couldn't do it. No. You couldn't do it. I couldn't retain any of it. No. I just there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. That's acting. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, that's acting. acting. That's why it's, that's why it's exciting. Um, yeah. Moving on from The Magicians, Under yeah. the Silver Lake. Right. It's exciting new feature film. Yeah. Very with a, exciting. With an incredible cast. Right. Riley Keough, Andrew yeah. Garfield, Tyler yeah. Grace. Incredible. Yeah. Tell us yeah. about that. It was great. I, I, I got to do a scene with Andrew Garfield, and, and he's somebody who obviously I've admired. He's a fantastic right. actor. And um, so handsome. Yeah. And, you know, it's it was it was definitely a different role than I had played. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was interesting because I was doing it while I was filming The Magicians. And what was interesting for me was I was in the middle of production on a TV show where it's like one or two takes and you're done. Right. And I was like, oh, cool. I, oh, I booked, you know, under yeah, the yeah. silver lake. I'll fly out for, you know, whatever, a few days and I'll be in and out for, you know, a couple hours or whatever. And I forgot because I hadn't done film in so long. I've been doing television right. for so long that right. it's like, you know, it's not just one or two takes. It's like 50 takes right, <laughs> of right, like right. the same thing, which, you know, I like both. Mm -hmm. I do, but that was the first time that I had really been reminded of, of the of the difference mm -hmm. in, you know, approaches right. from film and television. So well, we're yeah. excited to see it. Yeah, excited to it see was it. Really cool. um, let's go back a bit because your background there's an interesting story to that as well. Right. Um, tell yeah. us about you know rewinding to your childhood and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, people have found it interesting. Um, it is interesting. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's but like, you know, I, I don't think of it as that well, way. Well, because it's you. Yeah. Because you grew up that way. Right, right. and right. I grew up with like a million girls just like me right. that right. were right. just as diverse. And, right, you right. Know, um, But coming into America really and, and this things. world, in the Hollywood world as well. You know, yeah, yeah, you don't see it as often. Right, right. Um, and because you don't see it as often, mm -hmm. it was really challenging to get a lot of work right. and, and to be seen as, as I think I'm starting to be seen now, which is... Mm -hmm. Somebody who can play a, a wide variety of, of, right. of characters. But yeah, um, I was born in the United mm -hmm, States, mm -hmm. but I left when I was three. And I, my father's Saudi Arabian, and he's of Indian descent. And I, I, I grew up in the Persian Gulf. Mm -hmm. So most of my life was spent there. And a little different. It's, it's, it's a, a lot different. different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a lot different than, you know, when I left. You know, I've, I've been back to the Middle mm -hmm. East. And it's, it's changed so quickly. Mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, I think is really unique. I mean, how quickly the economy in Dubai has grown and right, how right. much infrastructure right. and how much growth and how much investment they've put in that growth mm -hmm. is really fascinating. I think in one of the only places in the world that's that's doing that right mm -hmm. now. So You mentioned, you mentioned yeah. obviously, you know, grow, 
being born here and then going there and then coming back and obviously your journey in Hollywood, you know, you right. went to like Towerhead and it's right. 11 years ago yeah. now. You've been yeah. doing this for a while. It's been a long time. Would you say yeah. Hollywood's changed? It's more open to the diversity? How do you feel about that? Absolutely. I think, you know, one of the reasons I started wanting to talk about what I was doing in my mm-hmm. career again recently because I was never a fan of that. I'm, right. I'm a pretty shy private person was because after years, like you said, 11, 12, 13 mm-hmm. years of acting, there's finally opportunity right, right. that feels inclusive and accurate to the world that I'm living in, and it's really exciting, and I want to participate in that. And I've never been more excited and, and more more optimistic about the future um, for our culture, mm-hmm. for, for you know, what film and television could accomplish with, with the inclusiveness mm-hmm. that's, that's happening right now and, and on a personal level for my career. Right, right. Um, but, you know, it wasn't always that way. When I did Towelhead, right. I think everybody hyped it up and they hyped me up, which is amazing, and it kind of came out of nowhere. But, you know, there literally was just not jobs after that. Right, right. How are you going right. to make this huge career happen right. when nobody's hiring girls like you, right. you know? Mm-hmm. So it was it was difficult, and it was it was really devastating for a long time throughout my 20s. But, but you know, like I said, it's, it's You stuck it it's out. It's changed. And yeah. here we are now. Yeah, and I'm so glad I did because there I was definitely that. times where I didn't want it. Right. <laughs> Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap this up with THR's top five. Five quick questions. Yeah. TV show you watched as a kid that you wish you were in? I think I know this answer. Well, it's not being made anymore, but I wish the remake had been successful. I grew up on Only Fools and Horses. Oh, my word. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah, I love that It's show. the best show ever. Yeah, I went to British school. So oh, like, so what I expected what wasn't that answer. Yeah, no. yeah. So oh, Only, only Fools and Horses. And horses. I think, yes. I mean, like, I want them to remake Del it, Boy. but then I Del don't. Boy. Yeah, Del yeah. Boy. Oh. <laughs> this is going over everyone's head in the studio right Everybody's. now. Everybody's. But it's comedic gold. I've just become the biggest fan right now. Yeah, yeah. That you've said that. Best yeah, answer ever. Um, okay, um, one <laughs> word to describe your journey as an actress so far. An excavation process. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Um, favorite movie soundtrack. Oh, I mean that's hard. No one that's said it would so be easy. Hard. No yeah. one said it would be easy. Anything that Alexander Desplat scores. And he works with Terrence Malick Mm -hmm. a lot. But I just, I have all of Alexander Desplat's scores on my phone. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, (laughs) One actor who inspires you. One actor who inspires me is Diane Weiss. She's always inspired me. Um, Jessica Lange has always inspired me. That's it. Yeah. Not allowed anymore. One. Okay. (laughs) Um, It is award season. Favorite movie of 2017? Call Me By Your Name. Didn't even think about it. For sure. Summer Bishop, thank you for stopping in. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.